Hey there everybody, Woody here. I'm coming at you with an Ultra Leap tutorial. It was formerly known as Leap Motion, and uh, in either case, it's um, I, I'm gonna get confused. I might call it the wrong thing. I've been using the Leap for a few weeks now, and it's been really, really cool, both for my character as well as just for some like general Unreal ideas I've had. But I have found that there is like not a lot of great tutorials out there for the stuff I need to do with the Leap. So here's a quick guide on how to get started in Unreal 5 with the Leap. Here I am on the Ultra Leap website. So you gonna see here there's like um this company has some priorities and it's it's a really cool company they do some really cool stuff the leap motion controller is what we're talking about today it's the one that's most widely in rotation the ultra leap 3di came out this year i know a lot of people out there already have this existing leap motion controller so that's what we're going to be focused on today that's what i have in front of me right now so let's talk about how to develop for it so you're going to go over to this developers page if you can't find it all you have to do is just type in ultra leap developer kit and then you just go to the ultra leap for developers page right here you'll find that download ultra leap gemini now this is the important first step you have to have this installed in order to use this with unreal engine so i'm gonna show this to you real quick this is actually a great starting point and you'll see why so one of the first things we can do is we can um you see we have ultra leap tracking here so we click on it now, this is pretty cool, but, and maybe ultimately obvious, but if you're gonna do a desktop setup like I'm gonna do today, you should have this little rectangle here sort of facing you. So uh, they have an Unreal plugin here. Uh, you can get it via the Unreal Marketplace. Now, this is weird because this is just kind of happening to me real in, time, in real time as I make the tutorial. When I first clicked on Ultra Leap Tracking, nothing came up. However, it did start a service tray option right here. So um, I'm gonna open this instead. Now, when I, this first comes up, obviously, I don't have my Leap plugged in yet. I'm using it here in my VTuber. After plugging it in, I decided to hit restart service. You can see a little green light came on down here. Now this is very hard to see, but if I open the control panel now, then suddenly there's my big dumb face. And here's the leap, which is actually a camera sitting right here on my desk. The visualizer is really nice because it's helpful to figure out what the leap is seeing because at certain points in time, I'm bumping the, bumping the microphone here. What's really nice about using the leap viewer here is that we can actually see when things are working and not working so the range of motion that we get so we can see like certain things aren't working here and you know like i can barely get those two fingers up if i you know all kinds of different things i can and can't do and you can see it's sort of failing sometimes and winning certain times there's the, the leap is an imperfect tool like most of our mocap tools however it's nice to be able to know when it's working when it's not you can also see the rotation on my base stations for my lighthouses as they're freaking out in the background. So the Ultra Leap works in three different modes and we can actually set these modes in Unreal Engine. We have desktop, head mounted, and screen top. Now the desktop is what you'd expect on the desk with the little green light facing you. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the data off the Leap. Now, we'll talk a little bit about how to get fingers and about how to do that with avatars, but ultimately it gets pretty complicated and a lot of that's probably something for another video. But for now, we're gonna talk about just how to get data and how to apply it to objects. And let's open the Epic Games Launcher. So next we're gonna go to the library here and then we're just gonna type in Ultra Leap. Now I already have this, but you're gonna get it and install it to engine. I don't have the option for Unreal 5, and it's not because Unreal 5 isn't available, it's because I've already installed it to Unreal 5. So find your version of Unreal you want and hit install. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project in Unreal. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a blank template here. Now Unreal 5 is up. Now we need to make sure that we have the plugin specifically on this level. So we're gonna go up to plugins, and then we're gonna type in Ultra. Since it's in our engine, we have the ability to add it. So I'm just gonna click that and it's gonna ask me to restart. All right, now that we've got that, we have a lot of different content here. So we have our content, we have our engine content. It's worth noting that they do actually ship a, a lot of specific stuff that's helpful with the engine. If I should hit show plugin content, suddenly we're gonna have a lot of things that come with the leap. So this is great. So like we have a whole bunch of levels here. Let's check a few out. So like if I open the desktop one, so this is a desktop 2D UI, use your finger and trigger buttons directly on the surface. So here we go, we have something with like pre-built functionality. I have some mouse control here, but like, 
You can see some of these are kind of flawed from the start because they're, I believe, expecting you to use some sort of VR controller here. It can track whether you, uh, whether you're clicking or not, and it's got also this nifty thing where, like, if you, you know, at some point, if you like turn your hand over, you can do this thing too. And this is definitely like designed for VR, but like I have the ability to like press buttons here. And these are all blueprints that you can find and you can change. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> Let's go make a new level. We're gonna create an open world. I'm just gonna choose the basic world. It's fine for now. And I'm gonna go back up to the top and I'm gonna turn off all of that stuff. I'm gonna open my content folder and uh, I'm not gonna get too organized here, but for the sake of this tutorial, you know, I'm just gonna do a couple things. So I'm just gonna make a ultra leap object. And now I'm gonna show you how to access this stuff because you need to be able to figure out how to do this yourself. Now, at first I was really intimidated because I didn't know how to get started with the Ultra Leap, but it's actually not difficult at all. It is super simple. So all you're gonna do to get started is you're gonna add an Ultra Leap input listener here. In my event graph, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a Leap input here. Now, I'm just gonna press Enter so it can be called Leap. And the first thing you see is that we have a lot of different events here, which is awesome. There is a bunch of stuff that we can get in terms of like game-changing events. Unleap device attached is gonna happen whenever you plug in a leap. Detached is gonna happen whenever you unplug the leap. On hand grabbed is gonna trigger every time that we like flex our hand over the leap. Hand released is the opposite. There's also pinching. There's on hand begin tracking, which is gonna trigger every time we put the hand over. And these are most of the events that I've used with it. The big one here, the most important thing is on leap tracking data. This is a component event that happens basically whenever we're tracking at all. And the data that we get off of that is stored in this struct here. Now I can get access to all the data in the struct really easily. I'm just gonna press break struct frame. You see I've got a number of things here. I've got hands visible, the frame rate. I've got this array, which is full of the hands and I have the frame ID and then I have the left hand visible and the right hand visible. Now for our interest, which is just getting hand position for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna keep things simple. Now we are gonna take this and then we are gonna do a for each loop. And what this does is gonna take all of our hands, in our case, both of our hands, and then we can grab both of these here. And then we can take data from them each time that we run a track. What I like to do at this point is I like to get my left and right hand. So I'm gonna grab the array element. I'm gonna break leap hand data. I'm gonna start by grabbing the hand type here. So I'm gonna select, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a switch on hand type here. And then every single time, every frame that we're running, we're gonna grab both of these hands. We're gonna go through the for each loop. For each loops aren't great to run on tick, by the way. You uh, typically don't wanna do something like this. So we're gonna take the left hand in the case that it's the left and we are going to take the array element and then we're gonna promote it to a variable and this is gonna be called left hand and then if it's the left hand, we're gonna select the left. I'll pop up these, you can see a little better. And we're gonna do the same thing here if it's the right hand. Once again, click promote to variable and then I'm gonna call this right and if it's the right hand, it'll get saved as the right hand, which is great. Now on complete, we can do stuff with our left and right hand. Type in get left. Let's say I just want to start with our left hand. I'm going to create a part of this blueprint. I'm going to add another component and I'm going to add a cube here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to call it lefty cube. I'm not doing anything too crazy right now. I'm going to get this and then I'm going to change the location. So I'm going to set world location. So I'm going to set world transform. Now on completed, I'm gonna set the, le the transform for lefty cube, and I'm gonna get my data from my left hand. So I'll grab my left hand here, and then I'm gonna break this. I'm gonna find my palm. I'm gonna break again, hitting that little break option. And now you can see I actually have some usable data points. I've got some locations, I got a rotator, and I've got a float for the width of my hand, which is really funny. You could, I guess, measure people's hands with this. So I'm gonna grab the new transform here. I'm gonna type in transform. Not make relative transform, make transform. So I'm gonna grab the position and I'm gonna grab the rotation and let's see what happens. I'm gonna press compile. 
Now, the first time I ran this code, it didn't seem like anything actually worked. It actually seemed like we had a problem, even though all our code was correct. Um, if that happens, probably what happened to you is that you just needed to uh, actually restart the engine to get a new update of the plugin, or at least that's what happened to me. Now, down here at the bottom, you can see my, when my hand moves, you can see that, zoom in nice and close here, you can see the cube moves too. Now, I have a little bit more influence on it with the rotation than when I do moving back and forth. And that's because this is like sort of relative to real life. I'm like moving my hand like a few inches. I'm moving the cube a few inches in the game. Now, what about all the fingers and stuff? So we want to get all that, right? So this is great. I'm going to temporarily unhook everything that we've got going on over here. I'm just going to move this to the side. I'll leave my left hand and my right hand alone over here. But what I'm going to do differently is that I'm going to attach another for each loop. Now this is for demonstration purposes only. This is not the right way to do this. This is to show you how to get the different parts of the structs and ultimately how to draw out your entire hand. So I'm going to grab my digits here, I'm going to plug it in, and then for each one, I'm going to drag out, I break leap digit data, and then I've got a distal, a proximal, and a metacarpal, and an intermediate bone. These are kind of out of order for how they really are in your hand. The distal is the longest bone on the finger. The intermediate is the middle one and the proximal is the first bone and the metacarpal is the bone that it's attached to on your hand. Now I can get all of these bones just by dragging this out and doing another for each loop. Again, this is not really how you do this, but I want to show the process of grabbing data from all of these different points and then figuring out where we find things. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the leap bone data. And you can see I have a next joint, a previous joint, and a rotation. So I'm gonna drag out here and I'm gonna draw debug. And I'm just gonna grab, uh, so for the point, we're gonna go with like a five, duration of five, and we'll make it bright white and neon green so that we can see it. Now, what we're telling Unreal right now is that for every time that we have a hand, break the hand, figure out for every finger on that hand, for every finger on that hand, for every bone on that hand, to draw a, our hand position in two places. So we're gonna draw a debug arrow here, and we're gonna grab the top of the previous joint and we're gonna end this joint. So we're gonna set the arrow size to something modest, like 15. The line color, we're gonna make a bright green, the duration, we're going to set to about uh, 0.2 seconds because it's going to disappear immediately. And the thickness, we're going to leave it a 5. The arrow size is probably actually the arrowhead itself, so I'm going to make this smaller. So then, now, when we start, we start streaming, you can see we got a little, bunch of little arrows over there. And our cube went right back to the place that we put it in the first place. So you can see this is kind of funky looking. So we got a problem here, right? Like we want to see data, but it's stuck in the ground. We're not really uh, getting everything out of it that we want to. Now, the easiest way to fix this problem is going to be just lowering the floor. So we'll do that. We will also make sure that everything's a little skinnier and easier to see. So we'll make everything one, arrow size one, and the duration can be 0.1, depending on your frame rate, of course. You can see now, suddenly we have an accurate read on what our leap is seeing, which is great, this is really helpful. And this is just a debug, however, it's not the same thing as transferring over to bones, which, as I said, is kind of another subject. Now, this is what happens when you run all of them. If you're already familiar with structs and for each loops, then you know exactly what's going on here. But basically, this is how it works. You can grab a hand from the, from the loop, like one of our save values here, and then you can pull things like palm, get data from that, and then you can break that and you can get that information. And then you could do the same thing with the index finger and you could get the, the digit information. And you could break one of those to be able to get the bone data, so on and so forth. You can also get the rotation, which is sort of another thing. Now, let me show you a real world example. This is kind of how I've been doing it. Now, here's a peek at my system. You can see I actually have a debug on one of my hands here, but uh, it's sort of mirroring what it's doing between the different hands. Now, I've got um, 
you know, both, mostly I'm just grabbing rotation data. And I actually think this looks pretty great, honestly, just for, for what it is and stuff like that. And we can adjust sort of some of the internals here. And I'll just sort of just give you a little overview of what I'm doing. Here's a little peek at my uh, sort of master character controller. There's a lot going on here and it's sort of like in process. I am, uh, here's the leap transforms. Basically, I'm doing something similar to what we've been doing before. You can kind of ignore a lot of this stuff. So I'm uh, grabbing my hands here and uh, I'm doing the same thing. I'm like grabbing my left, grabbing my right. Now I'm shooting out here. This is like a big blueprint with like a lot of different steps. And uh, yes, it is messy. Thank you very much. So I have different components that are all being uh, sort of modulated by the, um, by the leap, but they are being offset by a set of components. So like my, my leap offset here is this thing that's sort of static in front of me and it's supposed to simulate where the leap would be on my desk in relationship to my body. I'd highly recommend that you do this and get it in a spot that you like. Just use a scene component. And then, um, now I know that somewhere in the leap API, there's supposed to be a bone map thing. However, I have yet to see someone in Unreal 5, besides myself, use the leap for characters. So what I'm doing is uh, sort of like getting all of the rotations uh, by a series of functions and a series of structs. I have these pure functions here that are going into all of these structs that are going back into a blueprint interface, which is going to my animation blueprint into control rig. And uh, it's, it's really weird and complicated. And this is like why I haven't made a tutorial about this yet is because it's just kind of crazy. The um, I'll show you what's in here. Like I'm grabbing my left hand and right hand. And then um, from there, I'm grabbing my, you know, these are all my fingers. I've got the palm data coming in through a different thing. So I've got my intermediate, my proximal, my distal. I'm ignoring the metacarpals. I don't need them. Um, so then I'm like transforming the rotation by the offset, which is sort of the that exterior reference point so that I'm uh, only rotating these in reference to what I'm doing out there. So then I'm gonna make finger rotations and this is my custom struct. So I have the rotations coming in for each. You see if I go back up, those finger rotations come out and then they make up the hands. These are really simple structs. These are just holding rotators. And then um, those hands go back into the two finger rotations and then I send that out with a bunch of other stuff. So hope that helps a little bit. I can give you a sneak peek into Control Rig. All of those interfaces run through this event and I get certain things like um, my finger rotation coming through here. Now these were, you know, you can ignore these. These were like some sort of failed early bad examples. But these finger rotations, this is what's really important. This is where I'm dealing with all of my finger rotation data. Now this is kind of a mess. I have a bunch of control rigs here and they're pretty messy too. I have uh, sort of like offsets that are uh, set up on each finger that sort of just rotate things a little bit. There's probably a better way to do it than this. Um, this is the idea, is basically that I'm, I'm taking my leap data that's coming in all off of this master struct here, and I'm grabbing the important parts. I've got another function that is changing everything into quaternions and then sending it to all of my different controls. But I think that's about all I got for today. Thanks for checking this out.